What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I know I've been gone for a couple of weeks, but it's because I've been moving to my brand new apartment here in LA, which I am currently recording in right now. I'll currently recording in right now. I will go ahead and give you guys a like apartment tour and stuff like that soon. But in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some brand new lights that I recently picked up. And by picked up, I mean got sent. So the people over at Viltrox were nice enough to send me over some nice lights. And I've been using these lights in the last couple of photo shoots and I've been getting some behind the scenes content for you guys so you guys can kind of see what these lights look like and what the kind of images they can produce look like. The lights that I did get were the Ninja 200 and the Ninja 300. So the Ninja 200 and Ninja 300 are exactly the same lights. They're essentially the exact same build, exact same buttons, exact same remote, exact same literally everything. The only difference is the actual LED element. The Ninja 200 allows you to have bicolor while the Ninja 300 is only daylight balanced. So it's a little confusing because you would think that the higher number, aka the Ninja 300, would be the one that has the more features, but it's actually the other way. The Ninja 200 has slightly more features than the 300. So because I like having the capability of changing the actual Kelvin temperature of my lights, I have been using the 200 a lot more than the 300 when I only decide to bring one or two lights. So this entire video, I'll be referring to the light as the 200 because that's the one that I've been primarily using, but keep in mind, it's the exact same light. The only difference is 300 can't change color so with that out of the way let's go ahead and dive into the first thing which is the build quality so these lights are actually really really well built i honestly like the metal feel to them i have some other lights that are in this price range and have this type of form factor and they're not as durable feeling as these lights these lights have a really premium feel these lights are very well housed I don't feel like they're gonna break if I drop them. I haven't dropped them yet and I don't plan on dropping them or doing a stress test or anything, but I do have some confidence in these lights that if I were to drop them, they would not break. However, they are a little bit flimsy when it comes to the actual way that you have to use them with the Boeing's mount because I'll explain in a second. These lights don't actually have a full Boeing's mount, which is probably the one big downside of this light. It actually has like a mini Boeing's mount and it comes with a mini Boeing's mount adapter plate thing um, and I've never used it once just because I've never needed to use a mini Bowens mount. I like having full Bowens mounts since all my other lights are full Bowens. So the fact that this doesn't have that is a little bit of a bummer but they do include something that helps you kind of work around this and it is this plastic adapter for it which is a little you know it's not the sturdiest thing and it definitely feels a little foreign compared to the actual build because the build's solid it's metal it's made out of good materials and then you have this little adapter that's kind of plastic flimsy and you can't you know it doesn't really feel like it's it's up to the same amount of uh quality control as the light itself so that was a little disappointing when i got this light um, however, you know, it gets the job done and allows me to use my Boeing's attachments on this light. And at the end of the day, if, as long as I can use my attachments, I'm okay with it. Other than that, this light is very well built and has very premium quality feel to it. Um, so let's talk about what comes with the light itself, because obviously the light's going to come with it, but it also does come with some accessories, which is pretty nice. So the first thing that it comes with is it comes with a carrying case. The carrying case is pretty small, so don't think you can carry more than just this light and it is basically meant just for this light which is kind of a bummer when i do like to bring my lights outside of the studio i like to bring more than one light and that means having a big enough bag to carry more than one light and this bag definitely is not big enough for that this bag is going to be able to carry everything that comes with this light and that's pretty much about it. However, what it does come with are some accessories that are actually useful. So the first accessory that I like um, and have been using the most is actually the battery adapter for this thing. So this does come with um, a power cable that allows you to plug directly into the wall. And it also comes with a NPF battery adapter that allows you to run this thing off of NPF batteries, which is super convenient if you like to shoot outside of the studio and you have a ton of NPF batteries like I do. The other things that it comes with are the power cable, um, the main mini dish for the mini Boeing's mount, which I have never used once. I actually had to take it out of the bag for this video. And the adapter for the mini Boeing's to the full Boeing's uh, for the light. So this adapter comes with it and it allows you to convert the mini Boeing's attachment to the full Boeing's. It also does come with a remote that allows you to control this thing remotely. This does not have Bluetooth support from what I know. So you can't control it from like your app on a phone, I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it does come with a remote that allows you to control it. It has you know, the buttons that you need. It has a mode button, the um, intensity buttons, select buttons, stuff like that. 
very simple very basic very small so you can bring it everywhere with you and yeah that's about everything that comes with the light it doesn't come with batteries but again mpf batteries are really cheap to get so you can definitely find these anywhere it also does come with a little protector plate for the actual led light so when you are carrying it around you can put the protector plate onto the actual led element so it doesn't get you know fumbled around however because it's the mini Boeing's mount attachment and not the full Boeing's mount attachment, once you have that converter on there and it's converted to the full Boeing's, it no longer fits, which is really annoying. So I just never even use it. So I'm not even gonna show you guys, but it does come with something to protect the LED element, which is convenient if you are gonna be carrying it with just the housing and nothing attached to it. But yeah, that's basically everything on the side of the physical aspects of it. Let's go ahead and talk about the actual light itself and how it operates. Because I did notice when I was using this thing during photo shoots, the Kelvin's a little bit different than my other light, so I don't know which one is more inaccurate, but I have been using the other light for a lot longer, so I've been a lot more used to color grading and color correcting with that light than I have been with the Ninja 200. And I'll show you guys the difference. It's not like a huge difference, but it's enough for you to notice with your eyes that they're not exactly the same Kelvin temperature lighting. So yeah, let's go ahead and dive into the actual light itself. So the light goes from zero to 100. However, the biggest thing for me when using this light, and this is true for both the 200 and the 300, is the dimming of this light is not, there's not that big of a range to it, which is a little annoying um, to put it lightly because when I'm trying to get really low light shots, like the majority of my work is, I really need to have a low amount of light. And this thing goes from zero to like 50%. Even though it says 1%, like this thing is bright. And then if you turn it all the way from zero to 50, like it really doesn't even change that much. And it really only starts changing when you get to like 60 to 100%, which is kind of annoying because you don't have that much range when it comes to how much light you can actually use. It's almost like it's either on or off. You know, the dimming is almost useless because the range of how much it dims is just so low. So that's one of the first things I noticed while actually using this light was the range on how much it can dim is just not that good. And if you're trying to use this in a very low light scenario, it's probably gonna overpower the scene and make it almost unusable, which is why I you know, I have to strap on a Boeing's attachment. Like a, um, I usually have to put on a barn door so I can really close it off so it doesn't bleed that much light in. Um, and it's just kind of a little, you know, it's a little annoying because I wish that it would just be a little bit dimmer when it was at the dimmest setting, but it isn't. So the dimmest setting on this thing is like 15, 20% on my other lights, which is a little annoying. Second thing I noticed with this light is that the Kelvin temperature on the 200 is a little off. Um, I checked it with my other lights and it just seems a little, you know, it seems like it's not perfectly calibrated. It might just be my unit. It might just be me not using lights that were calibrated, but the lights that I've used in the past have been pretty calibrated. And when compared to this one, it just doesn't really seem that clean of a light, if that makes sense. I used it in a recent photo shoot, and as you guys can see in these photos, it when I correct it to the actual Kelvin temperature that I was using, it doesn't look like a pure white, and that's because it, the white balance is off. It might say it's at 5600 Kelvin, but it actually isn't at exactly at 5600 Kelvin. There's some error there, what it actually is emitting to what it says it's emitting. And you can tell from one, it's just looking at the light. And then two, from when I'm editing the photos that I did capture with this light, I can kind of just see that it's not exactly what it says it is, which is a little annoying when you're trying to dial in with multiple lights that have different color temperatures, because then the white balance is gonna be thrown off and it's gonna be a lot harder to color grade the photo and post. So, so to wrap it up, I do like these lights. I think these lights are pretty good. However, they have some things that just compared to my other lights, you know, my other lights definitely outshine them, no pun intended. My other lights that I do use and I have, have been using are just more predictable for me. And I know for a fact when I turn them on, the light's gonna be good from them. These, I can't really, you know, they really aren't that predictable. You know, I, if it's 2000 Kelvin, I don't really know if it's actually 2000 Kelvin or not. When my other lights are at 5600 Kelvin, I know that they're at 5600 Kelvin. I can't really say the same for these lights, which is a little, you know. So to wrap it up, my opinion on these lights is they're pretty good lights. They do what they are meant to do. They just, they don't do it as good as they could, if that makes sense. I do have other lights in the studio that if given the chance, I'll use those over these any day of the week because they just have cleaner light. But if I am going out in like a middle of a field and I don't have an outlet or something, these lights are something I will consider bringing along with because again, they're powered off of MPF batteries and some of my lights in the studio unfortunately are not. Um, but because these are, these are definitely always in the back pocket of when I go out because 
I like to have lights out on the go and these are good enough that I can, you know, I can manage with them and I'll have to spend a little bit more time color grading in post to make sure that the white balance is perfect. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's better to color balance in post and get the white balance than just miss the photo entirely because you didn't have the lights with you. So these lights are really good for on the go shooting and really good for being like a small package. You can bring these basically anywhere. They're really small lights. However, when put up against my other lights, I will definitely pick my other lights before these any day of the week. If it does come to studio lighting and it comes to controlled environments where you really need to be dialed in because I can trust my other lights. I can't really trust the lights coming off of these. Do I recommend these lights? I definitely do recommend these lights if you guys have never purchased any lights before and you just want something to mess around with, but I do not recommend these if you need the highest quality light possible. If you are only gonna be doing studio lighting, there's no reason to go for these lights. Get something that's gonna be a lot more reliable when it comes to the actual light quality. And if you wanna just bring these around and you know, run and gun situations outside and you just need a little bit of extra light to fill in the shadows or you need some extra light to shoot in the dark, these lights will do that job perfectly. However, if you are doing studio stuff and you never plan on leaving your studio and you have all your lights in your studio, I would definitely get some better lights than these. But with that being said, that is my review on the Ninja 200 and Ninja 300. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.